Yes, sir. Greetings. This is Jaxler. This is part six of the Neo Pets the Darkest Fairy Any Percent Speedrun tutorial. Fly, if this is the first of these videos that, that you're catching, maybe please I'll make sure that you start with part one. Otherwise, some of the stuff we'll be talking about will not make any really? sense. Just All right, so starting off into Act 2, it's important to note that our inventories are not carried over between um, characters, so we won't have the ledge fly or the speed potions available as, as to us quite yet. So hold forward in R1 as you start the act so that you can kind of run past the save. I would not really recommend making a save here um, because Act 2 really isn't super crazy hard in terms of speed tech. Um, and your save slots are just better off used in other situations. Okay, so you immediately want to start off by going into the hedge maze and following that right path. And then as you approach this part of the wand, we're going to open up the consumable menus and hold square to do the uh, instant text skip bug again. And then we'll just exit out the way that we came. Alright, so then we're going to head up the stairs. Um, this is another good spot to mention that like, some little spots in the terrain can sometimes cause Roberta to auto-jump, and again, jumping is a bit slower than running on the ground. So in some spots, it can be kind of nice to hold the L2 button. Um, but if you want uh, more info on how to, like, strafe with the, like, with the camera movement, like that you see me do, um, I can cover that in a separate video if you're interested, but it's really not super all that necessary, so I'm not going to hold it. Um, so we need to talk to this dude to get a a bottle from him so just jump and talk to him so that you move a little bit during the dialogue and then continue down the stairs and then we're going to go climb the tree that's in this area in order to get the uh the the, the staff part of the wall on this uh, twig <laughs> for lack of a better term so what you can also do is sort of jump off of this in order to move a little bit faster mid-air and then if you want to jump and do the instant text thing, you have to jump, then hit the D-pad, and then square. Otherwise, the jump will come out. So like that. Oh, I missed it. But you get the point. Then once you get it, just hold L2 and run off the side of the tree so that you fall a little bit faster. And then go back the way that you came. So now that we've got these two things, uh, we want to just uh, go past this guy and then... As we go into this next unskippable cutscene, we're going to do the same uh, instant text bug thing. So just keep holding down square, and this will save you your hand in the party, especially if you It's also just faster, so free time saving. And it sounds really funny. <laughs> So, interestingly enough, Roberta actually starts with some money in her act. So, we're gonna, um, as we go into this next bit here, uh, you can let go of square now at this point. You're gonna kind of hold up and to the right. She starts moving before you, uh, the camera pans back to her. So, hold up and to the right so that we can then buy two potions of Mirka Speed, but don't use them yet. While we're on the way, I hit down on the D-pad to hit mode select and then down and left with the d-pad in order to pre-select the fire mode which we need to have equipped when we do the next tutorial bit. Make sure you grab this light mode uh, regardless of your of your drops just so that you have it for later for the puzzle just in case okay and then as you approach the statue you can do the instant mm -hmm. text button again and then you should be good to go to build the blind. Something that you'll also see me do is hold L2 into doors uh, normally when you press square, it does like this crouch walk. Oh, I just, <laughs> I tried to demonstrate it and I just ran straight through the door. Um, so, um, it, what, the reason I hold down L2 is if you were to mash square, you would just start kind of squatting and grunting in place. But if you hold down L2, it actually prevents you from doing the, uh, sneaking animation. So this is the sneak. And then I try to sneak with the combat strafe and it just won't let me. But unless you did this really kind of funny wobble. <laughs> but we'll ignore that for right now. So go ahead and jump over the counter and then go talk to Seridar here. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so once you do that, just walk away and fire once. And then fire once at the book. Now, when you build up the charge attack, 
You don't have to do it for the full animation. You only have to do it part of the huh. movie. Like, just like that. That counts. And we're gonna find a rapid fire. Hmm. And then you're gonna uh, hmm. hit down on the D-pad to equip the fire mode, and then go to town. Oh, I Sometimes you can do that, but that's okay. And then you can go for uh, the instant text skip in between that next bit of dialogue if you're fast enough, but it's a bit tricky, so don't worry about it if you miss it. All right, after we skip the FMV here, I like to turn around, and this is where I equip my first potion and use it. This is an important spot to like hold down L2, so I'll show you the faster way through here. As you cross the river, hold L2 at least for a little bit, and then you should be good to go. Now, as we make our way up the stairs, you're gonna see me uh, take it a little bit wide, and then as we get up towards the top of the stairs, they put in an invisible wall on the staircase. So I just kind of tap left on the right stick in order to take a tight angle around here. Now, as you're going through this next hallway, stay on the, take the right so that you can avoid that dude over there uh, talking to you. And then you're gonna take a left as soon as you go through this door. Now in here, you take a left and then the next left. So that's this one right here. And then at the balcony, jump into the storm mode and then hit square to go to sleep. You can move, if you're already moving when you press square, you can actually move during the, the fade out, uh, but don't worry about it too much. Um, okay, so once we're done with that, we just leave out the door, head to the right, and then make our way out of here. We're gonna go straight down into the middle of the next chamber. And then we're gonna take a right into this next room right here. So this chapter is mostly just going from place to place. So a lot of me talking is just gonna be me describing to you where you need to go next, when to use your last potion, and where you can set up the instant text glitch. So you gotta jump right here to get into this FMV, and then after this FMV, we start running, and then we do the instant uh, text glitch again. Just like that, nice. And now after we exit this hallway, uh, we're gonna take a left, and then go all the way down and into the double doors to get to the left door. Try to avoid the enemies the best that you can. Uh, the blue enemies with their blue projectiles can actually inflict a slowdown effect. And if that happens to you and you have the slowdown debuff, start jumping. Um, I'll point that out if I accidentally get sniped. Um, but if you get hit by that jump, it's a bit faster than running with the slowdown debuff. Now, once you're on the stairs, a part of, about halfway down, you can jump over the railing and get down to here with the counterweights. Now, when you grab these, what you want to do is sort of kind of flick between up, upright, and up left, and you can cancel the pushing animation part of the way through, which makes it a bit faster. Yeah, just make sure you don't go too far to the left or right, otherwise you'll push it the wrong direction. This one's really easy to do. just go up and to the right because you got the last here. And it makes a great sound, too. Alright, so now after this cutscene, you're going to jump off the railing to the right, straight through the gear. It doesn't have any collision, so just go straight for it. <clears throat> just like that. And then grab it, and do the same kind of thing. And then you can move, and then jump earlier than you think, so that you can maintain some of the speed. I, can't, I cannot emphasize that enough, that you need to jump a little bit earlier there than you think if you want your jump to be happening at all. Okay, so now what we're gonna do for this bit, uh, this is a little bit tricky, so if you mess this up, don't worry about it. Uh, but what we're trying to do is set ourselves up after we grab this block, so that we can start running up the steps. So, grab the block, and then hold up into the right, and then start, uh, sorry, right, and then down into the right, and hopefully that'll take you up the stairs. Cool, okay. So, whether or not you hit that is fine, it's just a little movement thing. But either way, continue up the stairs, don't use your potion just yet. Uh, but as you pr approach the top of each flight of stairs, you can hold down L2 to avoid an extra auto-hop. Uh, at the bottom of each set of stairs, don't worry about the auto-hop as much, it actually doesn't really lose that much time. And then right as you um, exit the clock tower is when I generally like to use my second potion. So we're gonna exit it right here, and then I'll pop the next potion with triangle. 
just like that. Hit her across the opposite way of this big room. Stay on the left side of this hallway so that you can activate the cutscene trigger here. If you're too far to the right, the cutscene won't activate because you're not inside the trigger. Immediately, you're going to turn around, go up the staircase to the right, and then immediately to the left and through this set of doors. We have to watch this cutscene in order for the game to progress. So that's exactly where we're headed. And then as we go into this cutscene, if you keep holding the run button, and then as you hit this, hold backwards, you can start moving in the opposite direction during the fade out. That one's a lot easier to deal with, so, that, so that's why I like showing that one. Then you just immediately go back, start running the other way, stay to the right side. Alright, then we're gonna go down the right set of stairs, go up the stairs, and through the first door on our right. And it's going to be left, right, 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 left, I guess. And then you're good to go, okay? Keep going down the hallway and into the room. Okay, so for the Endless Staircase, I'm actually going to slow down a bit here. You'll still have plenty of potion and your speed here. I'm going to show you a faster kind of way to do this. So now the, the way that this puzzle normally works is you have to follow which way the statue's hand is pointing in order for it to work. But once you get about halfway down a flight of stairs, you'll see something kind of interesting. See how the game kind of flickered there? What you can then do is then turn back around, see it flicker again, and then go down the stairs. And that'll count as several different parts of the puzzle. And then you just repeat it one more time. So flick, flick, and then down the stairs. And that lets you do the puzzle a bit faster. It's in a set order every time, so as soon as you see kind of Roberta's model jerk a bit, you can turn around in the opposite direction. And if you just repeat that pattern one more time, you can get down there a bit faster than what's normally intended. All right, so out of the door, turn your camera stick to the right, and then pivot, and then head this direction. And then this will take us to the door to the exit of the library and to the end of Act 2. All right, great. So we made it to the end of Act 2. A uh, bit of a shorter video, but we're going to uh, section off Act 2 here. And in the next video, we're going to cover uh, the step, uh, step for getting to the end of Act 3. So, um, on that note, I'm going to cut it off here. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to let me know. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. And we'll catch you all Stop. in Part 7. Thank you so much for watching. No one